with wingware. Hi. Well, let me know when the thing starts. Are we good? Okay. All right. Hi. My name is Ken Dial. I'm the president and founder of Wingware. Uh, we are a compute. I'm sorry. We are a software company uh, that does solutions for aviation. Uh, I'm here today to talk about our launch uh, of our application, Jetfuel QC. Uh, Jetfuel QC is a turnkey quality control web application for commercial aviation industry. Uh, it monitors airport fueling equipment and automates inspection record keeping quality control activities and tracks operational readiness all in real time. Uh, so really quick, uh, how many people here uh, have to do pa paperwork for their daily job? Right? Okay, all of us. Almost. <laughs> all right. How many people have to do the same paperwork every day for that job? Yeah? All right. And how many people have that paperwork audited and regulated by a federal agency? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, it's, so it's really crucial whenever you're working on aircraft that everything is documented uh, daily uh, because you have to be able to provide evidence of the work that was performed uh, on top of uh, being able to show uh, history of, uh, of the actual inspection activity. So uh, these forms right here are summary forms for inspection fuel quality for, uh, for aircraft. And uh, what happens is, is that uh, you have, in these summary documents, there are basically a 30-day view of the inspection activity for the equipment. And we use something called a field document. This field document is out inside of uh, the field where the aircraft and the fueling equipment are. And personnel go out and they fuel, these, uh, uh, they fuel these aircraft and use these equipment and document the inspections. And what happens is, is that those inspections are then uh, transcribed to the summary forms. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, uh, these, air, uh, these, uh, these documents are then transcribed to the summary forms uh, and they look like this when they're complete after the month. Uh, so you multiply that times uh, the amount of equipment that's at a station. For example, in Dallas we have 22 pieces of equipment. Uh, you get this. So imagine trying to reconcile and manage all of this, uh, all of this paperwork and it's almost, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really, uh, really big task. Uh, but it's also a critical function, and uh, it really does control your destiny. Uh, so only people that are in top echelon positions are even allowed to touch these documents. So then you have an issue where... So then you have an issue where the most expensive people on payroll are currently tasked every day with managing all the paperwork records. Uh, why is that? Compliance audits. So you don't want somebody from the FAA coming inside your shop and saying, hey, what's going on? You want them to have a wonderful audit and think wonderful things about you. So uh, you have to spend lots of time, guys like me have to spend lots of time in places like this, looking at books like that, uh, trying to find discrepancies and correct them before the compliance audit occurs. So you'll find things like this where uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the handwriting is illegible. Uh, you'll have uh, scratch outs, you don't know what's going on. Uh, you'll have misspellings, you have even people that just don't sign it. So, yeah. So you have to find all this stuff and get it done before the audit, so you don't uh, so you don't have a bad audit. So, uh, what happens is uh, these these feelers are out there and they're filling this aircraft, and they uh, uh, because they don't know how to do the inspection through job retention or even possibly uh, they don't care. <laughs> They, uh, uh, they're doing the inspections wrong or they're not servicing the equipment properly. Uh, and this equipment that's just cited right here, uh, they're complex. They have high volumes and high velocities, high pressures uh, going through them. And if you don't service them, you don't inspect them properly, uh, you'll get an incident. Uh, like this gentleman right here, where we had an aircraft uh, that was being fueled in service and aircraft damage occurred because we had velocities too high, we had pressures too high, and it caused an enormous fuel spill. Yeah, not good stuff. So this problem in, the problem basically is this. Uh, we have lots of human error, and we have a paper system uh, that is too slow to inform. Uh, so what we did was we came up with the idea of automating the entire process and uh, uh, in the secret sauce of things have created smart equipment that you can deploy within the software to the station. And as a result, 
your compliance goes drastically up, the equipment becomes smart and actually issue warnings and document themselves what problems are, what problems are occurring, and you never have to worry again about missing an inspection or not knowing what's going on inside of your operation. Uh, we've added a mobile app so we could have our fillers and all of those uh, personnel out there on the fly since that's what they're doing, walking around, running around. And for the managers like me, we can be accessed, we can uh, we can be integrated into our operation even whenever we're not at the airport. Uh, phase one is actually already complete. We launched in January. Uh, from January, we actually went uh, live, and we are in uh, several airports. Um, we went to uh, a test mode with several other airports. We actually are growing. Uh, prototypes. I'm sorry, phase two. <laughs> No, no, get, no, no mulligan for that. Yeah, I don't know, man. This, uh, <laughs> this wire is kind of faulty, so when, if you just tap it, I uh, apologize. That's okay. Okay, no how worries. about some questions? Well, I will say that you, you've impressed me on finding a unique niche that needs to be addressed. And uh, just in your very pink, <laughs> accidentally pink presentation, uh, it does seem like you've really found a need. My question is, what's the competition out there? Is anybody else doing this? There is none. Girl, we are, this is a new job. market segment. Okay, maybe I'm wrong, but I would assume the big uh, commercial airlines that say American and I guess whoever else would already have special processes within their organization that they follow and also they have their own IT people. So are you uh, targeting like what size of commercial airlines or are the big airlines also interested in what you have? Uh, all the above. Uh, actually, I used to run the end plane operation uh, at Love Field, fueling both Southwest and Delta uh, from 2006 to 2014. Uh, so uh, I have a very uh, intimate knowledge of all the processes in place. Okay, so it's mostly your niche is more like just the fueling and everything related to the fueling process of jets, correct? That's correct. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Hey, uh, awesome problem, by the way. I think it's a very fascinating problem. Uh, but my question is, what is the cost of switching for an airlines right now? So you've got this legacy system in place through paper. What is the cost of them to retrain their workers on this mobile app or web app or IoT, whatever you have you that you've described? Wh why would it be advantageous to them to invest in that? So uh, the beautiful thing about this is that if you are fueling aircraft already, then you are receiving on the job training by your employer or the airline in which you have to service. So all of the training that you need to pick up our app and actually use it in document fuel inspections has already been done by the employer. Uh, sorry, over here. So on the onboarding challenge, the cost of uh, retraining, not necessarily that side, but the idea of giving the people on the ground access to their phones on a regular basis is, have you found that that's distracting? Is there any downside to having it be a mobile application that could be accessed on their phone, or are you forced, or is the airline forced, or the airport forced to give their employees who are out in the field new devices? So all airlines uh, have uh, their, their own feeling manual. Some airlines are less stringent than others. If you go to Europe, you actually can't even check your, air, uh, check your, uh, your cell phone onto the ramp. Uh, Southwest does not have a cell phone policy, United does. Uh, to, answer, to answer the question more, a little more specifically, um, we, are, uh, we developed the mobile application because we wanted to drive down the cost of what's currently available inside of what they call the safety zone uh, uh, for fueling aircraft. The, uh, you have these ridiculous devices uh, from Honeywell. Uh, they, you know, it's, like the, it's the same device that you, you see from UP, your UPS driver carrier, whatever, those little mobile computers that cost $6,000. And they don't have anything for processing power. Uh, well, uh, they're, they're currently the only game in town. So what we wanted to do was develop a mobile application so we could give people the alternative of going, hey, you can spend $6,000 on something that's class one div two and that you can you know, maybe bounce on the ground. Or you can, have a, or you can buy a phone equip your feelers with it, spend 600 bucks, and if he drops it, you're still ahead. So uh, we did that, and uh, we went ahead and, uh, actually, you know, it's funny, is that 
uh, Lidos, uh, uh, a company uh, that uh, owns Varric, uh, gave us a phone call and actually partnered with us and asked us if they could port our application into their handheld devices. So uh, we have begun that partnership with them and another company called QT Technologies, which is another competitor to them. How can we help you out? Uh, that's a good question. Um, really what we're looking for is um, uh, strategic people that can open doors for us uh, to the airlines, uh, to the regulatory bodies, uh, and hopefully push this as the next industry standard. Okay, another question. Um, okay, back in the day I started off actually developing mobile technology, so it was back in the 80s, late, early 90s. And back then, you were not supposed to use your cell phone while you were fueling even your car because of the fact that it could cause a spark from the fumes and then, of course, cause some kind of combustion. So what's up with that? I mean, how did you guys get around that? Or is that a myth? Or No, that's a great question. Uh, so there's a, uh, there's a document that everybody goes by called NFPA 407, and it regulates uh, what you can use and you, uh, not use uh, around uh, fueling, uh, handling of fuel. Uh, so essentially, NFPA 407 says that you have to have... <laughs> okay. 